What's a subtle sign someone has been through some shit? The maturity with which they handle unexpected events. I just had my annual performance review today and my supervisor repeatedly complimented me on this in regard to a few projects with unpredictable and unreliable clients. As a matter of fact, he said our head boss actually recommended me for those specific projects due to my history of remaining even keeled on similar work. I was reflecting on this when I read your comment and like, yeah, the unpredictability and toxic environment in which I grew up totally has prepared me to deal with difficult and frustrating clients. In my experience, this is true of people who have been through some shit with good support structures. Very often people that have been through some shit handle unexpected negative events very poorly, or, worse, utterly passively. The latter might be mistaken for calm maturity but is often more akin to a learned helplessness response. Not trusting people. You could be friends for years and think you're close, but in fact, you don't have the slightest idea what's going on in their lives. They could be staying up all night, being depressed, and tomorrow morning say hello with a smile on their faces. They simply don't trust people anymore no matter what they do, don't do. They have advice, good advice, for people who've just experienced trauma. Or for how to handle oddly specific and fucked up situations. Super independent because they learned not to rely on anybody. Having to parent themselves when young or raise their siblings, might not have children but is really good with them. They have already gone through that chapter, which takes their own parenting opportunities away. When nothing shocks them. I had a near-death experience and it put in perspective what actually mattered to me in my life and what didn't. I used to be easily embarrassed by a lot of things and worry about what people thought about me. But embarrassment means that someone has seen or heard something about you that you didn't want them to, and that will spread into people's opinion in the future. Thing is, if you're dead, you don't have a future. So at that moment I thought to myself how stupid I was to care about those things. I wished I had spent that time and energy on the people I love or the things I wanted to do instead. After that experience, though I have a future now, I find it pretty hard to be embarrassed by most things. And if I do feel it, no way in hell would I let it stop me from doing what I need to for the people I love or myself. Ironically, after gaining that mentality, people started asking me how I could be so confident sometimes. But it's not that I'm confident. I just have things more important to me than being worried about embarrassment. Preparation. Most people who've dealt with horrendous situations now prepare for the proverbial worst. I do this. I anticipate and plan for the worst. It can be as simple as bringing extra snacks on road trips or saving money in case I have an oh shit moment and I need to run. I don't know what I'd be running from but I am ready. Never asking for anything, even the bare minimum. Apologizing for things that aren't their fault even in the slightest. Never talking about their issues seriously, probably joking about it or even staying away from the topic completely. Flinching at small things. Edit. Thanks for the awards and upvotes, they're greatly appreciated. Just wanted to clear some things up. Of course, some people will do these things even without having been through shit. These are just common in a lot of people who have, myself included. When I was younger, I went shopping with my cousins. My uncle told us we could get whatever we want. So my cousins excitedly went around the store looking at whatever items there were. I literally didn't know what to do and only got one inexpensive thing after my uncle had to constantly reassure me that it's okay if I pick out a few things I like. The reason being, any time my parents spent money on me, whether it be for necessities, school, extracurriculars, whatever, they would throw it back in my face later on and make me feel guilty for asking for things, having money spent on me. So I eventually just stopped asking for things. Two days ago, my dad asked me why I never ask for anything or want to buy anything ever, and I didn't even bother explaining because I didn't feel like being gaslit into believing that the things I experienced as a kid never actually happened. It sucks but, it's whatever. Edit 1. Wow, I wasn't expecting to get this many replies. I'm going to answer a few questions so I don't have to individually respond to 11 different people. Why don't you bring this up to your parents? I have. But I don't anymore because it's incredibly mentally taxing to constantly have your trauma dismissed or compared to someone else who's had it worse. Were your parents struggling financially? 
without disclosing too much about my life on this app? No, we weren't. They would willingly pay for things for me, but once they get upset for some reason, it's time to throw it in our face again. I've always been the scapegoat, so I even started begging my parents not to rub stuff, expenses, grades, mental health issues, in my face, and they promised me, multiple times, that they wouldn't. But, I've had basically every little mistake thrown in my face at some point or another. I'll answer more questions here if people are curious. Thanks for all the support, I've gotten teary-eyed reading your comments. We're so much more than our trauma, and I hope each and every one of you can see that red heart. Unusually bad memory for the kind of person they are. I recently thought reading my childhood journals would be fun. I didn't remember what I wrote in them. Got high and was all excited for cute stuff I'd written. I am not a smart woman. I have a super shitty memory for a reason. I don't what made me think I'd read cute silly shit. It fucked me up. I can't believe little me went through so much pain. I didn't remember any of it until I read it. It fucking destroyed me man. I cried and just had to let it out of my soul. But I'm much happier now. I live with my best friend who consider as my only family and I'm in love with the most perfect man for me. Someone who loves me so unconditionally and is caring and patient. I never thought I'd make it past 21. I'm 34 and happy. Not wanting to bring up anything from their past. This is me, 100%. I can count on two hands good memories that I had with my family growing up. Eventually I moved away and learned really quickly that if I brought up my past at all people immediately felt sorry for me and I really got sick of people picking apart my past to find a way of understanding who I am today. I'm a very social and friendly person that has made a life I am truly proud of. I got so annoyed that I just stopped bringing up anything about my past unless someone explicitly asked. At one point I built up a fun community of friends living in a small apartment complex in California, US, before I moved to the East Coast, we all still keep in touch frequently. After three years of spending almost every weekend with my group of friends, one of them looked at me and say, holy shit. I just realized that I don't know anything about you or where you came from. Do you have a family? Siblings? Amy assumed you were, but are you even from this state? Now. I'm sure most people would think, sounds like some pretty crap friends, but I assure you they are the most supportive people I have ever met in my life. I just figured that if I wasn't asked I wouldn't bring it up, and I'm the kind of person that can keep a person talking about themselves for hours and I genuinely enjoy other people's stories more than my own, so I never gave them the opening to ask. If they did, I would wave the question away like Barney in How I Met Your Mother, please, and then move the conversation along so smoothly that they forgot they even asked the question in the first place. Long story short. Yes, when you go through enough trauma you learn to keep a lid on your past. My friends all know my history now, but I don't see much or a reason to share if it doesn't relate to the conversation at hand. Honestly? Empathy and understanding. Many have heightened senses of empathy naturally, but oftentimes the people who really care for others shows me that they themselves have really needed it at some point. I think the saddest people always try their hardest to make other people happy, because they know what it's like to feel absolutely worthless and they don't want anybody else to feel like that. Robin Williams Disproportionate reactions. Their reactions to most things are normal or even low-key, but occasionally they have a huge response to something minor key sign of trauma. When shit goes down, they know what to do. When you see someone deal with something extremely emotionally damaging or physically painful and they act like they don't even notice it, like nothing's changed. When you see that you know they've seen the worst and nothing is gonna get to them. My buddy came back from deployment this way. Zero emotion left after. Wife left with his kids and he just acted like he never had them in his life at all. His mom died maybe a year later, and he didn't even respond to it. Just kept his routine of drinking until he fell asleep. If they pay super close attention to the expressions of people around them and are always on the lookout for someone getting angry or upset. That's a surefire sign that they were abused at some point because it's a defense mechanism that they learn to try and head off upcoming blow-ups. Edit, were abused, was probably the wrong way of putting that, experienced severe trauma, or, been through some shit, are better descriptors. 
reacting to things inappropriately, either in scale or in nature. They'll overreact or underreact, or they'll do things like laugh, uneronically, at awful things. One example is a friend laughing and saying, it isn't a proper Thanksgiving dinner unless someone pulls a knife. His drunken dad held a knife against his neck while angrily admonishing him about something. Humans are good rationalizers, if we're frequently exposed to awful things they become normal. Don't like being touched. I like being touched by people I know and trust. It's comforting. I trust like five people. Let me just say the social distancing over the last couple of years, with the face masks, and the hand washing has been bliss for me. Apologizing often, for things not their fault. Absolutely. I came here to say this. It's a defense mechanism. Saying you're sorry equals mama not beating you. It bleeds into adulthood and becomes your go-to reaction to avoid pain. People who have been though some shit are reading these replies and realizing for the first time what the giveaways were all this time. People who are very very closed off. I've always known that I'm a really private person but I've recently made the connection about why I'm closed off to such a degree. When you've been through some sh asterisk t in your life, sometimes the idea of anyone knowing any intimate detail about you can be taxing and even scary. My dog is a total sweetheart until I try to bake bread. As soon as I bring out my rolling pin, he freaks out. I don't want to know what happened, but it makes me sad. My old rescue was scared of newspapers and books crying face. Sometimes, even when they want to, they can't cry. I have this iron lol. Whenever I get close to crying my brain does a hard reset and without wanting it I think, lol I'm almost crying this is hilarious, and then the moment is over. It's really something. They seem to wait for bad things to happen and can't imagine a good or normal outcome. I call this the ghost walk, where someone will casually walk on the front of their feet to suppress the noise from their footsteps. I notice this from abused children, teens typically. Some people should just not have children, so sad. Children, who grow up in dysfunctional homes, homes where there's a lot of fighting and arguing, when they're adults, tend to hate confrontation. They lack self-esteem and much more easily believe people who gaslight them. They don't easily stand up for themselves. Laughing at something bad, inconvenient happening to them. Half the replies are just how I behave normally should I be worried. They check for the exits. I was never in the military but I have multiple friends and family who served and were in combat. They don't complain about anything normal people do. Raining out and they have no umbrella. Smile on their face. Snowing? Same smile. Traffic? Same smile. The exception being my one cousin with PTSD who ended his own life a year ago. If you know anyone who's struggling, be there for them. Constantly having a reason, explanation ready for anything even though nobody asked. Or over explaining yourself without prompt. Or asking permissions for really small things you wouldn't think about. Or over apologizing over small mistakes. Being called an old soul. When I was a kid, teen, early adult years. Fuck I still hear it at 26. Though I believe it's in part due to me still looking young. Didn't realize until a few years ago that I'm not an old soul, I just had to grow up way too young. I definitely don't take it as the compliment I used to. Edit. Really any kid who for some reason gravitates towards adults much more than interacting with peers their own age is a pretty telltale sign for me that there's shit this kid should NT be dealing with. Emotional detachment. Making fuck jokes about your trauma.